Has someone given you a good compliment before? And has someone said negative thing about you before? Between the negative compliment and then the positive compliment, which of them do you still remember today? The negative. Someone have told you you are so beautiful. He said, thank you. Less than two minutes, you have forgotten. Let someone say you are ugly, you are stupid. Until Jesus return. <laughs> Until Jesus return. So have you ever asked yourself why the negative compliments stay with us forever and positive compliments don't? Once upon a time, someone told you you are beautiful. You don't even remember that person. There are some of the compliments you don't remember. But those who gave you negative compliments, you never forget them. No one can make you forget them. Why is it that we allow negative energy to take over us, but positive energy is not able to enter us? And that is where we come back to that point where we don't know how to receive love, but we know how to receive hatred. Some of you remember your enemies more than your family members. And you think about your enemies more than those who really love you. Even when you are at the washroom, all of a sudden, that negative energy will enter you. And you remember your enemy. Oh, Jesus, help me. You remember what they say, how bad they wish you. But do you know that according to scripture, you are not supposed to remember them only. You are giving them love. And those you think don't deserve your love are actually those who deserve that love. Because the reason why you think they don't deserve your love is the same reason why they deserve your love. Because Jesus said, bless them that curse you. He said, it has been said, love your neighbor and curse your heart, your enemy. But he said, I tell you from today onwards, you have to love your enemy and bless them that curse you. Matthew 5, 43. Ye have heard that it has been said. Ye have heard that it has been said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. 44. Uh -huh. But I say unto you. But I say unto you. Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And pray for them who despitefully used you. And persecute you. And persecute you. Be honest. Can you do it? Is this even possible? Why is Jesus making life difficult for us? Because it's easy to hate the one who hates you and love the one who loves you. But it is difficult to love the one who hates you. The law of Jesus is more difficult than keeping the Ten Commandments from Moses. He came from an angle people didn't know. You know, he is God. He knows how to package it and put it. You would think it's cheap. But it's so complicated. He said, love your enemies and bless them. And pray for them that despitefully used you and persecute you. Do you know the reason why? You are cursing your enemies and it's not working. Can I tell you why you curse your enemy and the curse don't happen? Luke 17, 1. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Uh -huh. Then said he unto the disciples. Then said he unto the disciples. Listen. Uh -huh. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Ha. Take it again. I want you to take it. And I want you to listen to this. Then said he unto the disciples. Then said he unto the disciples. It is impossible. It is impossible. But that offenses will come. But that offenses will come. Now, so Jesus was saying that it is impossible for you to dodge offenses. So you cannot pray to Jesus to take away offenses. Because the one you are praying to has written a letter telling you that it is impossible for you to dodge offenses. Man will offend you. And some of those offenses are going to be curses. So he said it is impossible for you to live a curse-free life. Does that mean everyone here is cursed? Yes, you are cursed. Follow me. Don't cut this one and say, oh, wait. He said, read that scripture. Read that scripture. Then said he unto the disciples, uh -huh. It is up impossible. It is impossible. But that offenses will come. But that offenses will come. But woe unto him. But woe uh -huh. unto him. Unto him. Through whom they come. Through whom they come. Continue. I want you to read one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It were better for him. It were better for him. That a millstone. That a millstone. Were hung around his neck. Were hung around his neck. And he cast into the sea and we will throw him down to the sea than that he should offend one of these little ha, ones ha, 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 ha. have you read the bible where paul addressed 
these people as little children. According to Jesus, he called you a little child because you are still growing. And Jesus said, it is impossible but that offenses will come. Which means you cannot dodge offenses. But he said, woe to him through whom they came. It would have been better if they hung a milestone on the head of that person and throw him to the sea. So if you offend me, Jesus is saying that it would have been better for you to tie a big stone on your head and fall into the sea and never spoke up again. If you allow the devil to use you and bring offenses to me, Jesus said, woe, cursed be on any man who allow himself to be used as a channel to offend these little children. And he was talking about his disciples and those who follow him. Which means we cannot dodge offenses. They must come. But the one who brought them is in trouble. And do you not understand the reason why it's dangerous to be the one hurting a man who is called by God? Jesus said it would have been better if you drown and died without popping up again. There are many offended souls who love God. You better go and apologize. Right? It's not pride. If you have to kneel down in public to ask forgiveness from a Christian you have offended, do it. Don't say it doesn't matter. Jesus said it would have been better hey, if, if you are drawn. Which means offenses will come. My brother, you can't dodge offenses. All of you, one way or the other, you have been offended before. Read Deuteronomy 23, 4. Deuteronomy 23, 4. Uh -huh. Because they met you not with bread uh -huh. and with water in the way, uh -huh. when ye came forth out of Egypt, uh -huh. and because they hired against thee, Balaam, the son of Beor, ha. of Petor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Wait, so Balaam was hired. <laughs> Balaam was what? Hired, which means he was never a prophet of God. It's, it's like, now, if you come to hire me to curse people, which means it's my profession. I'm good in cursing. And if a king can hire a man, which means that man was a, was a well-known cursing prophet in his generation. And when he curses you, nothing can stop that case. Five. Five. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam. The Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam, which means God refused to listen to Balaam. Uh -huh. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing. Take your seat, sir. Take it. Take your seat. Thank you. He turned the curse into a what? A blessing, which means. Balaam cursed them because you, you realize that he tried different times to curse the people and in numbers he said I cannot bless I cannot curse those that God have blessed. Deuteronomy is saying that Balaam actually cursed them but God turned the curse into a blessing. This is not the love equation. So if Jesus said bless them that curse you and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Jesus was giving you the love equation because he was the same man that turned the curse into a blessing when Balaam cursed the people of Israel. That is because in every darkness there is an amount of light. Darkness is a raw material we use to bring out light. Curse is also a raw material we need to bring our blessing. Now, so until you are cursed, you cannot be blessed. So Jesus said when your enemies are cursing you, you have to bless and pray for them because they are those giving me the raw material. They are those providing the raw material for me to bless you. So he said, don't love your neighbor and hate your enemies as they said because your enemy is actually doing you more good than your neighbor. Do you know? Those who love me are not a contributing factor to where I am. It is those who hate me and curse me. Why do you think you don't like a man of God or you don't like a person and the person is still doing well? You hate that individual, yet he's excelling. The more the enemies, the more the raw material. And those who are into production, you know that the bigger the raw material, the higher the production. So, as a mother of fact, some of you, you are not blessed because you don't have enemies. You think your enemies are the reason why you are not blessed. But as a mother of fact, you need more enemies. Because the only enemy against you is your grandmother. Some of you is your auntie, one person. But you need to employ more enemies. You need to, ha, kaluza. You, don't, you are not getting it. This is the love equation that before you can be blessed, you need to be cursed. Because... A curse is a raw material in the hands of God to 
bless somebody. Why did God brought out light? Because there was darkness. He said, for Balaam curse you, but God turned that curse into a blessing. So why would God allow Balaam to curse? Because he needed the raw material. When God enter into a family, he's looking for the blessed one. Jesus said, the stone that has been rejected shall become the cornerstone. So when God enter into an atmosphere, he's looking for the most rejected person. Jephthah was rejected in his own family. In another environment, he was accepted. And he became a commander of many. That's because God is looking for raw materials to bless people. Jesus warned his disciples. He said, be careful. And woe unto you when all men speak nicely unto you. Now, if Jesus is the one saying, you should understand that if you are looking for the endorsement and then the recommendation of men, Jesus said, woe unto you. If all men spoke nicely of you. Every man who has become your favorite in the Bible is because of adversaries. You hate battles, but you want the crown. How will you get a crown without a battle? Love can be turned into hatred when access is denied. Some of you, where you are sitting, someone wanted to sit there, but because he couldn't get that access and you have that access, they want to speak you out. There are ladies here, men hate. When they see you, they feel like shooting you because they proposed and you said no. The love has been turned into what? Hatred because access denied. When someone loves you, Jesus said, you have to return that love. But before you return it, receive it. But when someone cares you, bless them. That's the equation.